Hello, my name is James and this is my channel Happy Elephant Books and today I'm going to bring you an introduction to The Witchlands by Susan Dennard. <music> Approximately a year ago I tried to do a review of Susan Dennard's Truth Witch in 60 seconds. Needless to say it was impossible to do. I did my best but I clearly left that feeling like I hadn't done this series slightly enough of a review or introduction to really get people who haven't read it before into it. So today I wanted to provide you an introduction into the Witchland series to hopefully get you into it if you haven't read it before or if you have already started reading this series to help you get along in your way. And for those eagle-eyed viewers you will see that they are here, so I'm gonna mess up my bookshelves now, but you won't mind. I, won't, I will mind, but let's get them. This is how OCD I am. I'm actually moving these books over slightly so it's not a mess while I do this review, or this introduction, should I say. Ah, <sighs> OCD calm. So for those of you who are completely new, uh, especially to my channel because I love these books, The Witchlands include Truth Witch, Wind Witch, and then a novella, which is Sight Witch. So the absolute first question that I have to answer, in case you have it, is what order should I read these books in? I am always a fan of reading books in publication order, regardless of the chronology that's actually included in the story. In that vein, you want to read these books as Truth Witch, Wind Witch, and then Sight Witch. However, if you want to read these books in chronological order, you would read them as Sight Witch, Truth Witch, and Wind Witch. And the next book should be called Blood Witch, although I've seen different dates. Some have said it's coming out at the end of 2018. I've also seen a release that says 2019, so we just have to be patient. But I'm getting ahead of myself. First, let me introduce you to the Witchland series. Like all good fantasy series, you are provided with a map of the Witchlands. And this is the area that these novels take place within. The Witchland novels are full of political tensions, despite these novels taking place in a time of peace. Sort of. There are three large empires that seem to take the lion's share of the space and the resources. The Dalmoti Empire. The Empire of Katora and the Empire of Marstock. On top of that, you have a whole host of smaller countries. But for the purpose of this video, the main ones that you need to be aware of are the Nubrovna Empire and the Pirate Republic of Saldonica. These are how I pronounce them when I read them. You might pronounce them slightly differently, but it's all good. No one's gonna tell you off. Susan Denard isn't gonna come in through that door right now and tell me off if I'm saying it wrongly. We join the Witchlands at something described as the end of the 20 year truce. Basically all the countries across the witch lands, rather large or small, were just engaged in an absolutely ravaging war. It was getting so bad, so many people were dying, that all the countries got together and they signed a treaty called the 20 year truce, which basically meant for 20 years there would be no more war. Sounds pretty good, right? So that's the land. And then obviously comes the big part, which involves the name witch. People across the witchlands may be born with special gifts. These are often referred to as witcheries, and ultimately this gives the people magical powers. They're all based from six main kind of elemental sources. And although there's diff very different types of powers, they tend to fit in one of these six schools or elements, as it were. You have earth, air, water, fire, ether, and void. Every person who has a type of magic has a certain level of ability. That's a hard word to get out. A certain level of ability. Now some people have a huge amount of power and then others barely anything at all. And again these fit in the six different schools. So for example a type of water witch you might expect to be say called a sea witch. And that witch has some power over the element of sea, involving waves and currents and or being able to literally float and glide through water as though flying through the air. However, there are also those more powerful witches, which could be named based on the actual element itself. For example, a true water witch. Now, a true water witch is able to control 
anything to do with water rather than just the sea. They literally can use magic with water in all of its different elemental states, such as being able to freeze or being able to use moisture in the air, create a mist in a room so that it's completely clouded and you can't see a thing. And basically scattered across the Witchlands are these magical wells, six magical wells linked to their type of elemental magic. Kotora is the largest country in the Witchlands and is also home to our main character, Safia von Hastrel, and she happens to be a truth witch. She's also a domna, which is kind of like a lord or a lady. What I have to mention, however, is being a truth witch is an extremely rare form of magic. Basically, a truth witch can tell if someone is lying or telling the truth, whether this be through their actions or what they're saying. This magic is so rare that actually it is kept secret by Safi, and very few people actually know of her true power. Now, Kotora is a rich land, and it is ruled by a less than attractive emperor. He is called Emperor Heinrich II. The royal family even have their own elite guards called Hellbards. These Hellbards are very elite and unique in the fact that witchery does not seem to affect them at all. In our story, there are four main characters that you follow. We've discussed Safi, and Safi happens to have a thread sister called Isolt. I should probably explain here that the term thread is used quite frequently throughout these books. Imagine that every person has like a woolen thread that is connected to some greater power. Everybody has them who's alive. When two people have a real connection, and I'm talking about mega BFFs, they are described as th thread brothers or thread sisters. What it means is this person is my BFF, we are super close, they are my thread sister. And you only get one is my belief. At the start of this book, Safi and Isolt are trying to take revenge on somebody who has wronged Safi. Unfortunately, it goes wrong and they happen to attack the wrong person. This results in them being hunted down by what is described as a blood witch and his name is Adawan. Now, Adawan is our third main character. And then finally, we have Prince Merrick from Nebruvna. He meets Safi at a royal event and basically, he's kind of desperate. He comes from a tiny country where people are going hungry and he needs to set up trade with these bigger countries. He needs help, basically because his lands are still infertile based on the Witchland Wars, which was, you know, at least 19 years ago. And that kind of starts us up to where this book begins. But let's not forget another character, Emperor Heinrich II. Heinrich seems to have found out that Safi may be a truth witch and it's exposed that he wants a hand in marriage. Now, no one really has the ability to turn down the emperor's hand in marriage. Not if you want to live anyway. This series is action-packed, full of heart, and completely engaging. But before I leave you to go and get reading, there's another problem. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold one at a time because these are quite heavy. So not only are we approaching the end of a 20-year truce, and let's just say some of the countries are quite keen for it to end, but something is going wrong with magic. It's as though the magical wells are drying up or losing their magical properties. Not only that, but there is a vile phenomenon going on in this world called cleaving. This is where a person's thread is somehow cut, resulting in kind of oozing, pulsing, black tar, coming from the wounds, turning the person into this disgusting zombie-like creature. And they are no fun to go up against. There doesn't seem to be any real clear explanation as to why it's happening. So you could be in the middle of the docks and suddenly someone starts to cleave, like shake and begin to ooze in front of you, and then they get pretty vicious. So all this is going on. So welcome to the Witchlands, come on in. Honestly, you won't regret it. I do, I've read all three books. I do need to do a review for the second and the third, or the first and the third, depending on how, what order you read them in. But I'd recommend publication order, and I really enjoyed them. I didn't want to have a break between Wind Witch and Sight Witch, because I was just so into it, I wanted it to keep going. So I hope this has given you a bit of a refresh or a reminder that you might want to read this series. Now, if you could have any witchery type power, what would it be, even if it's not covered in these books? For me, I think it would have to be rather the power to go invisible. I think <laughs> all the introverts will pick that one at some point. Or it would be the ability to read and potentially manipulate minds. 
that's more my evil side. I think one of those would do me quite well. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It'd be great to chat to you in the comments. And if you're new here, why not subscribe? It'd be nice to see you